you're about to listen to is brought to you by Kingdom Message Interdenominational Ministry. But the Lord incline your heart to His Word as you listen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you because you are wonderful. Thank you because the entrance into that world gives light and gives understanding to the simple. We receive grace for today. We receive revelations. We receive understanding in the heart of men to believe and to receive what you are saying to us. Give us an understanding. Don't let us walk in confusion. And please teach us yourself and throw light into our heart. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome everybody to today's meeting. It's just, today is just a wonderful day. Um, the topic I want to introduce, I will introduce it. The topic is power of imagining Christ. That is from imagination. Power of imagining Christ. The power of imagining Christ. That is the topic. Um, this topic I will just do an introduction today because another person will minister next week. And I want to beg all of you to always be in this class. God has kept various food with our brethren. You will be proud to think that your heart is twisted to a certain man. We are God kept your food. You will just you will miss it. But I pray that you will not miss what God has kept for you in Jesus' name. So, for the next three or four weeks, I'll be out of Lagos in the month of August. I will only come for pre-congress. Well, uh, we are not going to be around me and my wife, but the, everything goes on as usual. So please, I will start this topic just an intro today. When I come back first week in September, I will come and continue. I just want you to put your mind there. That's why I want to say something about it. So, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So, the theme, the topic of today is power of imagination. That is, power of imagining Christ. The secret of, of imagining Christ. When you are imagining, when you are you are imagining, you are thinking Jesus, secret of thinking about Christ. So, that's it. Um, of course, there are various uh, definitions to the matter of uh, imagination even when you look at dictionary. Uh, but, let me just define imagination as the ability to see with the mind what you cannot see with the eyes. Do you understand? Imagination is the ability to see with the eyes. Eh? To see, sorry. To see <clears throat> with the mind, with your mind now. What you cannot see with your eyes. But your mind can see it. That's imagination. And let me tell you, we use our imagination every day on everything. In fact, as you are sitting down, you are imagining something. Every word you are going to be hearing from me, you must imagine it before it could make sense to you. So, what I'm, it is not a fantasy. It is real. It is not a fantasy at all. You know, fantasy is something you are imagining what is not real. This is real. This is real. It has to do with what you think. That is it. So it has to do with what you think. Uh, imagination helps you to see what you can, what cannot be seen. It will help you to see 
what you can see ordinarily. So, the ability to see with your mind is your mind now. It has to do with mind. What you cannot see with your eyes. So that's why um, they always tell you the eyes of your mind. Your mind has the eyes. I am begging you to listen. It will, be, it will take, this teaching might take like 10 series. I wouldn't mind if we can get booklet out of it to help us. But I just want to introduce it today. Um, then I will tell about the dangerous aspect of it too. There are people that imagine just anything. The scientist, where is, where did they discover what they are doing from? The metaphysics, where did they discover what they are doing? The occultic world, where, what is the product? What, what is their imagination? As we go along the way, we are going to look at all this to know that what we, you are imagining will determine your life. Whatever you have not imagined, even if it is for a second, you cannot leave it out. It's not possible. So the power of imagining Christ is talking about if Christ has not become your meditation, if Christ has not become your, your thoughts, I am telling you, don't ever expect that you can produce Christ in your daily life. It's not possible. So it is a lie. If anybody is telling you that you can bring forth Christ when you have not imagined Christ. And the issue of imagination, you imagine what you receive. Ah. Holy Spirit, please help me to be able to explain. Imagination works with information, either bad or good. It is what you garbage in that you are going to garbage out. Your thought is a center of processing things. So it is whatever is put there, whatever is put in that thought, that is exactly what you are going to be manifesting. Um, this truth, Satan knows about it. And he does not joke with it. I am begging you. He doesn't joke with it at all. He knows that your mind work by information. That whatever you fill your mind with, will automatically become your life. And I can tell you for free, most of what you see in the world system, most of the tradition, the culture, the material world, the material world, once you allow it to dominate you, it can form the basis of your living. Form. I know you will always say I talk about form very well. As good as it is, Satan has targets. He wants to feed your mind. See, who should ever feed the mind? We have dominance on the mind. The mind is neutral. It's very neutral. Very neutral. Whatever you feed it with, whatever data you input in it, that is the information we bring out. The reason why some of us cannot manifest power of Christ is the jumps of condemnation. Jumps of unworthiness, jumps of distractions that Satan has piled up in our heart. But before I go, let me look at some scripture so that you'll be able to know that I'm not just saying what is outside Christ. Can you just open your scriptures? Let 
Luke chapter 6, verse 45 to 46. Luke 6. Luke chapter 6. So let's go. Luke chapter 6, verse 45 to 46. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart. Please let me see. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bring get forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bring forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. Uh, and he now say, And why call him ye me Lord, Lord, and you do not do the thing which I say? Go back to that for 45. Let's look at that 45 together. Say a good man, out of the good trail of his heart, bring get forth that which is good. If you see anybody living good, good character, loving people, enduring people, forbear people, if you say prosperous, it's not to be us. The grace of God is upon his life. He's bringing forth the fruit of Christ. He's not just bringing forth. It was a function of the good treasures of his heart. That he bringeth forth that which is good. If there is no treasure of goodness in his heart, he can't bring forth good. Do you understand? Brethren, do you understand what we are saying? An evil man also, out of the evil treasure, of his heart, bring forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart is mouth speaketh. Evil man, you are only calling him evil man. The problem is evil in his heart. So, it depends on the trail that your heart has kept over the year. If the trail of your heart is good, you are going to be good. That's the point. If the trail of your heart is bad, you are going to be bad. Do you know that? Nobody became just if you, you just become immoral or liar or whatever you are saying. It was a function of the trail. Of his heart. If there is, he has a trail of lust. If Satan has succeeded that he has loaded his heart with lust, he has loaded his heart with uh, social media nakedness, social media um, uh, terrible things, and everything. When you want to bring forth, that is what Satan will be bringing forth. Whatever you load your heart with, whatever garbage, if you load your heart with earthly garbage, worldly garbage, that is what you are going to be bringing forth. Even when you see you are deceiving people, you yourself you know that deception too comes from the heart. When you are not, when you when you are bringing out outside, it's opposite of what you are in inside. The deception, the origin of that deception, starts from where? The heart. It is to the extent of how loaded you are with the trail of deception. So, any heart that is good too, who is, that person, that's a liar, God is helping him, he looks away, the Lord is people are talking this, are talking that, he's not an you. He must have filled his heart with the trail of good things. And that good thing is Jesus. Say, you hear me? It's Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, 
say, guide your heart with all diligence. Guide. With all, not half diligence. Most of us don't know this. Just go, bru, 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 bru. Guide your heart with all diligence, not half diligence. For out of it is what? Huh? Issues of life. <laughs> I am praying. I need them. You also need them. In this area of what they are talking about. How our hearts will be completely fixed on Christ. Not on nothing else. And you have to be a Trust God to be a security of your mind. Because there are many information. The leader around, they are unwanted plants. It's a weed. You don't need to nurture it before they grow. Once they come in, they will be growing themselves. But you see, if it is a real seed, the least you need to be water. <laughs> you need to separate wheat from it. You need to expose it to sunlight. You need to watch it against something attacking it. The least it doesn't grow ordinarily. I'm telling you. Why well, check even in the plants? So <laughs> praise God. When you are saying Maybe some, you call somebody who is misbehaving, a character that cannot be seen in Christ. Maybe somebody is stingy. Let me just give you that example. If somebody is stingy, of course, you all know that stinginess cannot be seen in Christ. Of course, you all know that. There is an evil trail, evil understanding of stinginess. That Satan has succeeded in piling up in that act so he cannot operate in faith. Satan will tell him he has deceived me to believe that the life of a man contained in the abundance of what he possesses. But you see, a man who gives liberally, who only goes and control his giving, is not basing his life. Based on the amount of the material waste or money he was able to gather, he has understand the trail that who he is in Christ is prosperous. So he can never be stranded anytime. But the other one, <laughs> is that my mom working for this one? I beg. Even when only goes talk from here to tomorrow, that evil trail that fights the word of God is always there. I'm just giving that as an example. What you people will be saying is a stinginess. The origin of stinginess is a strong goal in his heart. Some are even inherited because there is, in a natural man, there is a way we inherit, um, there is a way we inherit through our brain, the brain of our father. They, not our, they are not my father again. So if there is any brain that must work in me, it is the brain of Holy Ghost. Now, there is a way we inherit it. Um, so many of the family traits. So, it, what you inherited is the same pattern of thinking. And you have seen it. And you also you have believed in it. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I have told you that today is just an introduction. These things we are going to Thick, cheap, trusting the Holy Spirit to help us. Um, I just want you to know. Let's look at Proverbs 23, verse 7. All these things are in the scriptures. Proverbs 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, 7. It's a common scripture. Okay. For as he thinketh in his heart, 
so yeast. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. That's a stingy man they are discussing there. <laughs> if he says something outside, he's eating. He says, Come and eat. If you look at the world for that person, you know they are talking about stingy man. Come and eat. If you look at message, look at NIT, uh, NIV, you will see what I'm talking about. He says, Come and eat. Now lie. He is not happy. It is not from his heart. So, in over time, people will know. So, it is a problem of the way he thinks. There is an understanding he has gotten. There is a thought that has dominated in life. And so, the Bible says, so he is. It's not physical deception. What you are really is, that's what we are addressing this evening now. What you are really is, is what is your thoughts. Your thought is your life. You hear me? Your thought is you. Not your dressing, not your... Leave that one. The real problem is a thought. May God give us understanding. But I want us to read various scripture to, to understand some of this thing. We can look at it from more. We have, looked, read, we have read Luke 6, 45 to 46. Okay. Let's look at uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. I just want to try to be telling you both that your thoughts is what made up of you. And so it should give us serious body. That what am I thinking now? Is this thought Jesus? Is it is it from the spirit or from self? Now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. Can you see it? Whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on this thing. You know, you provide the, those the last this say think on this this these things look at this scripture he said whatever things are true this truth you go beyond you are saying either you are not lying or <laughs> be true your truth is Christ your reality is Christ Adamic reality is a lie. It's not a real life. You know, Colossians 3, 4. You say, when Christ, who is your real life, shall appear. <laughs> so, what is true here? Is Christ. He say, whatever things that are true, Christ is the only truth. Every other thing in the world is fake. Is deception. Anything the work I have over you, there is no truth in the world. It's only in Christ. That's why I said, whatever things that are true. So, what you should fix your mind on, what you should think on all the time, is the truth of who you are in Christ. I am blessed. When you are thinking about cause, cause will manifest in your life. I am blessed. There is no lack in our kingdom. There is no sickness in us. We are, I carry grace. Know that you begin to imagine that <laughs> you are a bondage. You will be a bondage. You. That's why I say, whatever things that are true, when you get to a place, why, why are you thinking something else? Why are you allowing your physical circumstance to begin to speak to you? 
You are a child of God. You are not a failure. But Satan is telling you you are a failure. Satan is telling you you are barren. Is that your truth? Is that your identity? No. Whatever things that are true. Look at the second one. He said whatever things that are honest. Honesty is a problem. You are, see, if we like, let's change government from here to tomorrow. Change from tomorrow now. Change will be go to articulate. Look for another person. Put here. The problem of human race is a natural mind. Naturally, they inherit a natural mind from Adam. And that's why a sender man is renewed. Unfortunately, the church, who's supposed to be the pillar of honesty and of the truth, who's supposed to be the pillar of honesty to the nation and launch several disciples who can stand God and in the face of money like this, they put billion in you and you will not mess it up. Where are they? Are we not crazy? Is our Jew not crazy about money? Is it a pursuit? The, the standard of measurement of a man of God is it not based on material wealth? These are the problem of the nation. If we like protest, the, see, is it the president that will be in a custom office? The most corrupt people in this nation now, they are civil servants. They are the one that will teach politicians. Someone was telling me, once a politician get there, they make it the gym, they make it the, said, this is how we steal money here. But in jail, but it's a So you see many people are not honest. No honesty. In the face of money. No honesty. We, we mess up. And we now say the country is not good. Instead of Turn it to Christ and repent. You can be a Christian. I was like that before. You can be a Christian. When you love money, you can't be honest. No man loves money that can be honest. You won't, if you can look honest like 90% a lie. Something, something will happen. It will make you to do what is not honest. What you cannot ordinarily do, you just discover that you agree to it. Your consent will accept to it. So whatsoever things are just. Think on it. What is just? Do you believe? It's not talking about your own justification now, your own righteousness. He's talking about Christ has justified you. His righteousness has qualified you. Do you meditate of your just? Don't you look? You don't allow Satan to point in you to your to your hero of your past. You don't allow Satan to point you to your unworthiness. You see. Let's say that is pointing you to unworthiness. He has finished you. You will not think on what is just. Christ has justified me. You don't look at Jesus inside you. You are looking at yourself in the flesh. You are looking at most of the errors you have made in the past. You are not accepting the justification of Christ. You won't have peace. <laughs> Satan will always be condemning you. Whatever things that are pure purity, you don't remember that you carry a pure nature. That who you are now, you are pure. You don't have nature of ungodly in you, nature of unholy habit in you. So if you are pure, Bible call you saints. Why don't you feast your thoughts on that sainthood? You'll be manifesting it. But if you are saved for saints by mouth and you are not, you don't fill your mind with the reality that you have been created pure, you'll be misbehaving. You'll be living in deception. You'll be saying something when you mean something else in your mind. Whatever thing that are lovely. You see, you are somebody half you. Do you think of what is lovely? Or you are interpreting meaning, giving meaning to the error of that person? Are you not the type that give meaning when your wife offended you? And this is why she did this. And that was what she was thinking. Why are you thinking that your thought is not lovely? If we look at First Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible talks about genuine love does not keep the record of evil. So, where do you now see your thoughts and you are interpreting? Even if that is what, don't think like that. Whatever thing that are lovely, think on it. The love of Christ, not a conditional love. If it's good to me, I'll be good to him. Whatever thing that of good reports, good reports that we challenge people, he said, think of it. When things happen and you have privilege to manifest Christ, do you 
Do you want to submit Jesus or yourself? Is it the fame of Jesus you want to show? Or you want men to know about you? Cool report. They send you. Go and buy it in, in an organization. They're giving you prices. Say this price of this thing is 10,000. And God help you. You are able to get it cheaper in the market at 77,000. And you buy 50 copies of it. <laughs> that is an opportunity for you to have a good report to, to manifest and celebrate Jesus. Or Nalai. You said they have approved it. They say it's 10,000. Let me chop it. And you ask Omo Igbo to write a report for you. To say, give me a receipt. Because Omo Igbo will always ask me, how much do you put there? I'm sorry that I'm saying Omo Igbo now. Those boys that used to sell in the market, they say, how much should I put? <laughs> and I say, how much did you sell for me? Why are you saying, how much should I put? How much do you... What was, the, what, what was the amount I bought from you? Put it here. They, they say, well, you won't have good reports so before God. But they will press you because you even bring receipts. There is no way they will catch you. But I tell you, God does not look at your face. He look at the mind. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, virtue, many sisters lack Christian virtue. They talk anyhow. They don't want to see people. They pick people up on anything. They are not interactive. They don't relate. No Christian virtue. They are no wife materials. If there be any praise, how to praise people, how to appreciate people. Eh? Say, God bless you. Thank you. You did this way. You do this. Even though you can do it better, but you did everything, everything, you just knock out. He said, Think on this thing. If there be any praise, think on this thing. What engages your thoughts? Is it not so, thought of what somebody said concerning you that is engaging your thoughts? Is it not what has happened last two weeks that engaged your thoughts? Is it not social media? Do you know why we must give to the, listen to the, Message of Christ. Listen, 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 listen. The more you listen, the, young, the, the more your mind is loaded with Christ. That is at that point you can bring out the treasure of Christ. Whatever you listen to will dominate your life. I tell you, if you go to your church and somebody is preaching, 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 open, 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 I am telling you, you will start seeing dream. Master will be pursuing you. Demon will be appearing to you in your dream. It's a function of what they point you to. Whatever they point you to will become your thoughts. Whatever you think will manifest. And before you everything will start going down around you. And that's why you must be very careful. If you, are, if you have listened to 10 messages of grace, a single law, message of law, can wipe out the 10 message of grace. And that's where the Bible, it comes in that you should... They guide your heart with what? With all diligence. For how of it is this of life? You have that duty to choose what you listen to. If somebody is negative, you are by him, you are by him. Somebody is telling you, demon today, demon tomorrow, demon yesterday, you will become demon. Demon will move around you. Another person is telling you, Christ today, Christ tomorrow, freedom in Christ, liberty in him, grace in him, everything. Christ will start manifesting when you believe it. You will see him around you. Whatever you believe becomes your life. I warn you. Brethren, I say, I warn you. That's the reality of this journey. I am telling you the truth. Whatever you believe, it becomes your life. If you believe nonsense, nonsense will dominate you. So, like I told you, we are talking, opening this issue up, the power of imagining Christ. You can't bring out Christ if you don't imagine Christ. And Christ will have not learned you have not loaded yourself with it. You can't imagine on it. You can't chew him. You can't meditate on it. You can't have faith. He can't become a picture in your mind. So what we are talking about, it has to do with what you think. 
Imagination helps you to see what cannot be seen. The reason why some of us, we are not demonstrating the power of God. What we are imagining is happening. If you fix your mind above high, the power of God will manifest you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And I've told you that imagination work with information. That information can be good or bad. So if you fill your mind with a cabbage of this world, that is what, we, what you will be producing. But if you renew your mind to the truth of God's word, then that you begin to see Jesus, the reality of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit, manifest, manifest, manifest. The problem why I know that many of the gospel we preach in Nigeria is not correct. Is by the time you look at the manifestation of so many Christians, <laughs> some they think like it's saddest. They don't even so sad and so selfish. Because they've not seen Jesus correctly. May God help us and change our imagination. <coughs> Send the word of life that will transform us in the name of Jesus. So, your imagination will help you to receive all your inheritance in Christ. That's the truth. Your imagination will help you. Let's look at the Father Abraham. Father Abraham, um, some of you have not thought that. Why did God told Father Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1? Let's read it. Genesis 12, 1. Um, oh, you see the way Father Abraham does. It was just following God. Sometimes when I think about it, somebody just come, a God that none of your forefather has worshipped before. Nobody has. They just, they just come to you. Say, Abraham, come out of your father's house, of your kindred, and of your family, and of your nation. Follow me, I will show you where to stay. <laughs> and he, he feed on that word. Now, let's look at Genesis 21. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. You see the level coming out. It's like a new man. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. That's his family. No, it's a compound. From thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Oh, yeah, continue. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Uh -huh. And I will bless them that bless thee, causing that cause thee, and in this shall all family of the earth be blessed. Wow. Yes, sir. So Abraham departs. As the Lord has spoken unto him, and Lord went with him, and Abraham was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Aram. What I want to bring out here is that so Abraham departed according to that word from first one to three. God said, I will make you a great nation, I will bless you. Whosoever calls you is cause, whosoever bless you is blessed. You are blessed. Through you, the family of the world is going to be blessed too. This is this word that God told him here. Enter his heart as a treasure. If he does not believe from first one to three, there is a reality in Aaron and Paul. He was the first son of his family. He had the right word, he had that. But the one of us who read that God is producing a nation out of it, he has imagined it. If he has not imagined, he cannot. He enjoyed this promise by imagination. He has imagined it that he and his descendant will be a family that will be special in the world. And that's why even when, uh, when Jews are like this, God will not leave them. It was because of the covenant he struck with their father. He said, so fast one said, so, that is, based on that word, so Abraham departed. 
as the Lord has spoken to him, and Lord went with him. So, so according to that word, he did not just depart. He depart based on the word he received to his mind and the word he has imagined. He has imagined himself being a great nation. He has imagined himself being blessed. He has imagined himself is no cause. Even people want to cause it their cause. He has imagined himself being a product of blessing to entire world. He agreed with God. So on that basis, he departed. Is it one thing is to receive the word of God. Another thing is to imagine that word and believe it. So that's how these people of faith, they live. There are many of them like that in the scripture. Who always meditate on the word of God. You remember this man, Joshua. After Moses had died, what did God told him? He was scared. How do I make this to God? How can you come and put me to do this, say, Father? God said, No problem. When he was praying, God said, No problem. said, Only meditate in my word day and night. What will you do? You will have a good source. So the secret of a good source is, is a meditation, which is imagination. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let me stop here. My time is gone. There are many things I, I just wish I could say. But what I want to tell you, what do you feast your thought on? Do you feast your thoughts on who you are in Christ or on who you are in Adam? You know, you have allowed Satan to point you correctly to who you are in Adam by defining you, by your material weight, by your education, by this, by your age, by clothes you wear. Those are the way the world is there. They, 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 they were pictures. And those pictures now fill your mind. And you are thinking about it. Especially when you don't have food in the house, you begin to feel stranded. You are imagining stranded. You have struggle of imagination that must be put down. The real struggle that must be put down is a struggle of imagination. Witchcraft, they are not strong. If you look at Second Corinthians, I think, 10 4, you will know that the real strong that must be subjected to Christ, as you go forward, you will understand, is the strong of imagination. Shall we pray? I want us to talk to Jesus this evening. Every strong of evil imagination, the trail of evil in my heart, that hides somewhere. Pointing me away to trouble, pointing me to problem, pointing me to doubt, pointing me to fear, pointing me to my failure, pointing me to sin. Father, who this strong down this afternoon? Can you just pray this evening? Lord, who that is strong? See, he is pointing you to yourself. It's a strong of thoughts. They have fight the word of God. When the word of God is coming, they'll be fighting it, they'll be distracting it, or this strong. Place your hand upon your chest, Lord. Help me come and pull it down. There are, there are strongholds in my thoughts. There are strongholds that are fighting the reality of truth in me. Lord, pull it down. There are distractions. Pull it down. There are things I appreciate that my heart is here enjoying. Pull it down. I don't want it again. Holy Spirit, help me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for this evening. We bless you because you have spoken to us. Please help us, Lord Jesus, to believe this truth and let our life be transformed. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe you are blessed with the message you just listened to. For more messages like this, kindly subscribe and follow us on all our social media platforms. YouTube, KMIM Online. Facebook, facebook.com slash KMIM online. Telegram, KMIM.ng. To support and take part in this ministry, kindly like and share. Also, for prayer and counseling, call any of the following numbers. Plus 234-8064-259285. Plus 234-8064. 7064371102 plus 234 Visit us also 
on our website at kmin.ng. Thanks and God bless you. Amen.